The Baltimore Ravens face off against the Washington Commanders this Sunday, 1 o'clock at the bank. Jaden Daniels, Lamar Jackson. We're diving into all the details of this matchup in this game preview episode of the Flock Rundown. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed. What's up, Ravens fans and maybe some Commanders fans? My name is Ryan. Welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown game preview episode. We got a fun game, exciting matchup this Sunday at the bank. The Commanders are playing great ball. They're four and one. The Ravens are also playing great ball have won three straight and are three and two so this should be an exciting matchup let's start out with the injury reports for the commanders it looks like brian robinson jr is going to be a game time decision he hasn't been practicing this week so he might not play so that is going to be a little bit of a loss they love to establish the run game with him and Eckler and Daniels so we'll be monitoring that before the game on Sunday but they might potentially be without him and then on the Ravens side it's looking like they're going to be without defensive tackle Broderick Washington and a linebacker Malik Harrison you never know there could be another key surprise absence that ends up happening but as far as we know right now I think that that's who the main players are going to be out or potentially out for both teams so not a ton of key guys missing we'll see what happens with Brian Robinson Jr. I think that that could impact the game a little bit if they are without him but let's dive into the details of this game the commanders are rolling right now they're four and one they're averaging 31 points a game them and the Ravens have the best offenses in the NFL which is pretty crazy crazy. The commanders run the ball really well too. They like to get Brian Robinson and Eckler involved. And then obviously Jaden Daniels is always a threat with his legs. He's running quite a bit each game. He hasn't thrown over 30 passes this entire year. So they don't really like to air it out a ton, you know? So I think that the formula here is to shut the run down, which is what the Ravens do best. The Ravens have the number one run defense. So this is going to be the biggest challenge that the commanders have faced, at least on the ground. You know, the Ravens secondary has let up quite a bit of points but I do like the Ravens secondary versus these receivers this reminds me more of the Buffalo Bills matchup the commanders do have talent I'm not disrespecting their receivers but we're coming off a game against Jamar Chase T Higgins and Joe Burrow and I don't think that they have any of those guys shout out to Terry McLaurin love Terry McLaurin's game but he's not Jamar Chase or T Higgins and we have really talented corners really talented safeties our secondary has not been communicating and tackling the way that they should they're not playing up to their potential yet but I think that this is the type of game where a team heading into Baltimore with a lot of hype is going to get a bit of a wake-up call and I know the commanders are a good team I think that they're a playoff team not disrespecting them at all. Just feel like this is that type of game where an NFC opponent comes into Baltimore and runs into a buzzsaw. We saw it a couple times last year with the Lions and the Seahawks. The Ravens are 21-1 and against NFC opponents since Lamar Jackson has been here. That is a crazy record, you know. They always tie that to Lamar. Lamar is 21-1 and versus the NFC, but that's a team record you know that that is definitely not just Lamar Jackson the Ravens historically dominate NFC opponents and I'm not saying that they will dominate this game but I like this matchup I think that this plays into the Ravens favor I think that this is a game where the Ravens defense can get back on track especially that secondary I expect them to play a lot of physical tight coverage like they did against Buffalo if we can shut down their run game make them one-dimensional make them throw more than they've had to all season long like I said Jaden Daniels has not thrown over 30 passes this entire season not saying that he can't have success through the air the Ravens have had a leaky secondary, but that's only been against elite, elite wide receivers who are winning these one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I just feel like our corners are going to be able to hang with these receivers. You know, we're going to be able to get physical with them. We're stopping them on the ground and forcing them to throw a lot more than they want to into tight windows and physical coverage. I just feel like we're going to get enough stops doing that. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to score some points. You know, our secondary is a little vulnerable right now, but it's not due to talent. It's not even due to scheme, really. It's just execution you know we need to play better and I just feel like at home coming off a game like they just had against the Bengals where the secondary got torched I just feel like this is a get right game I feel like this is 
a matchup that plays into our defense's favor. And historically, the Ravens' defense has made it a nightmare for rookie quarterbacks. Now, shout out to Jaden Daniels. He's a little bit above what a normal rookie quarterback would be for sure. I definitely think that he's going to play in this league for a long time. I think the commanders definitely have their franchise quarterback. I love what I'm seeing from him. But he's a rookie. He has only played five NFL games. And the Ravens historically, year after year, man, have just caused so many problems for rookie quarterbacks because they bring so many different looks, so many different disguised blitzes. You don't know who's coming from where. You know, you think you got everything blocked pre-snap and then here comes Kyle Hamilton screaming off from the side, sacking Daniels. And we got athletic guys to go after Daniels. And the Ravens defense is very used to playing against mobile quarterbacks. I mean... They're practicing against Lamar Jackson all the time. A lot of these players on this defense were here last year, too, so they've gotten multiple years of experience against Lamar Jackson in this Ravens offense. And I'm not saying that the commander's offense is identical, but having a mobile quarterback back there that a lot of other teams don't deal well with, I think the Ravens defense will deal fine with. They're very used to that. That's not a surprise thing that they're going to have to deal with. And Jaden Daniels, as big of a threat he is, is not the same type of threat that Lamar Jackson is. We just got to shut the run game down. I think that that's the most important thing. If the commanders do get going on the ground and can kind of create their balanced attack to keep the defense guessing like they have been doing, then yeah, it's going to be a really tight game and the commanders are going to put up some points. So let's flip over to the offensive side of the ball. The Ravens are going to run the ball. It's another Derrick Henry game. I called that last week and it ended up not being really a Derrick Henry game. Uh, For a couple reasons, the Bengals really brought heavy personnel to the line and ran a lot of blitzes and cover zero and basically sold out to stop the run game and then Lamar beat him through the air. Now the commanders could make that same decision and commit to trying to slow this run game down, but they haven't done that all season long. The commander's defense likes to run a lighter personnel out there. They're very similar to Buffalo. Once again, I'll bring back that comparison. I think that this matchup reminds me so much of the Bills game on both sides of the ball, really. And the Bills wanted to have a lighter personnel on defense out there. Well, We're going to run down your throats. Derrick Henry's going to get going. And I'm not expecting anything different against this commander's game until that defense shows otherwise. And I think that that needs to be the Ravens' game plan. Run early and often. Get Henry going early. And then if they want to stack the box, if they want to sell out, if they want to bring that heavier personnel, then you have mismatches with our tight ends against their linebackers. You got one-on-one matchups outside with Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman. I trust that they can beat these corners. I trust that our tight ends can create these mismatches and beat their one-on-one matchups with the linebackers and safeties. And I trust Lamar Jackson to deliver the ball. The Ravens offense proved last week that they can truly be multiple, that they have answers to whatever defenses throw their way. You know, we were questioning it before last week because we were just running 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 that was definitely what we were having most success at and then the Bengals sold out to stop the run they did end up slowing down the run and we just killed them through the air I don't see any way that the Ravens offense doesn't continue to roll outside of self-inflicted wounds penalties fumbles turnovers I, I I don't see how the Ravens offense doesn't score 30 plus and continues to roll so it's really on this Ravens defense but let's talk about how the commanders can win this game especially for the commanders fans watching I don't want this to all be Ravens are going to dominate because I really don't think so I just think that the Ravens do have an edge in this game but the commanders can win this game by establishing a run game by continuing to do what they've been doing on offense they've scored 31 points a game now that is against weaker opponents I definitely think this is the strongest defense that they're going to face this is definitely the strongest run defense that they're going to face there's no better run defense in the NFL but if the commanders can establish a run game with Eckler or if Brian Robinson plays or Jaden Daniels gets going and we can't contain him on the ground and he's breaking loose consistently if that continues to happen like it has has been happening, then obviously the commanders are going to be able to have a balanced attack and do what they want to do and keep the Ravens defense guessing. And then the Ravens defense becomes a lot more vulnerable and the commanders will be able to put up a lot more points. So I think the key for the commanders is to establish their run game like they have been. That creates such a balanced attack. You don't want to become one dimensional, especially against this Ravens defense. If you're not able to run the ball at all, if your back's averaging two yards a carry and you just can't get going and we also contain Jaden Daniels and you got to consistently throw into these tight windows I don't think that that's a recipe to win this game there's going to be some mistakes there's just going to be a lot of third down pass deflections where we get the ball back and the Ravens offense is going to continue to roll I don't think that the commanders are going to be able to stop the Ravens offense so 
this is on the commander's offense to kind of match what the Ravens are doing. You know, they're going to have to create a back and forth type game where they're moving the ball consistently on this Ravens defense. And it's possible. There's been multiple teams that have done it this year. So I'm not saying that that's an impossible feat. And then on the other side of the ball, I think if the Ravens are not committing to the run early or getting a little too cute with the play calling, which we have seen in moments. Todd Munkin has been dialed in recently, but we've seen this where the Ravens trying to come out passing and they end up going three and out and just gets a slow start. Things like that are a lot of self-inflicted wounds, holding penalties, fumbled snaps, and then the commanders capitalizing on those Ravens mistakes will give the commanders a big edge in this game. So the commanders being able to run the ball with Daniels and or the running backs is going to give them an edge in this game if they are able to establish that on the ground. And then the Ravens offense making some self-inflicted mistakes, which they are not foreign to. Let's end this with some score predictions and just some overall predictions for the game. I do have the Ravens winning 34-24. I respect the commanders. I think that they put up a great fight. I think that they are able to score some points and Jaden Daniels is going to make some crazy plays happen, but I think the Ravens can shut this commander's run game down, can confuse Jaden Daniels and give him a lot of looks that he's never seen before and get enough stops that they're not able to score 30. And then I think the Ravens offense continues to roll. There's no reason that the Ravens can't run the ball with success with Derrick Henry. And then if, like I said, if they do want to bring in a lot of heavier personnel and sell out and blitz constantly and run cover zero just to make sure that we can't run the ball, then we're going to attack you through the air. We literally did it last week, put up 41. So outside of self-inflicted wounds, the Ravens offense is going to score 30 plus in this game. It's just really on the Ravens defense, slowing that commander's offense down just enough. And I think that they do. So 34-24 in a bold prediction, I got Derrick Henry going over 150 yards two touchdowns but let me know your score predictions your thoughts about this game your bold predictions for this game I love hearing what you guys think and what you guys have to say commanders fans that are watching why do you think I'm dead wrong and the commanders are going to win this game I appreciate all of you guys tuning in to another episode of the flock rundown have a beautiful rest of your day enjoy your weekend and I'll let the greatest linebacker in the history of the game Ray Lewis take us out Ravens flock Flock Rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The Flock Rundown. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed.